great pleasure of introducing the Honorable Sheila Jackson Lee to all of you. Uh, we're fortunate to have her as our special guest. Um, Congressman Jackson Lee is serving her ninth term as a member of the U.S. House of uh, Representatives. She represents the 18th Congressional District of Texas, as Lovell stated, uh, which is centered in the inner city of Houston. She earned a BA in political science from Yale University with honors, followed by a law degree from the University of Virginia Law School. She sits on three congressional committees, the House Committees on the Judiciary, Homeland Security, and Foreign Affairs. She was recently named the new chairwoman of the Homeland Security Subcommittee on Transportation Security and Infrastructure Production. Her legislative activities cover a myriad of fronts, including health care, civil rights, education, crime, families and children, and immigration, all of which reflect her ongoing efforts to help the underserved and unfortunate. Um, and uh, no doubt you heard all of those reflected in the, uh, in the lecture by Professor Ron just uh, over the last hour or so. For example, she's authored several immigration bills in an effort to set forth a comprehensive solution to uh, our immigration problem. She's introduced legislation to enhance federal enforcement of hate crimes and has played a significant role in the renewal and reauthorization of the Voting Rights Act. She's offered an amendment to the NASA reauthorization bill that would ensure equal access for minority and economically disadvantaged students to NASA's education programs. And she's launched a, a large and prestigious grant program to uh, uh, work with institutions serving minorities to bring more women of color to the field of space and aeronautics. This desire to help is also evident in other activities in which Congresswoman Jackson Lee is engaged. She's co-chair of the Congressional Children's Caucus and a member of the Pakistan Caucus, Afghan Caucus, and the newly formed Algerian Caucus. So clearly she has an international role in, uh, in leadership in the issue of fairness, just as we've heard again in Professor Marmot's presentation. She uh, has a number of leadership positions uh, in, in the Congress working with various uh, subsets of that and she's been actively engaged in addressing and resolving the genocide issue in Darfur. Uh, accordingly, she met with Sudanese refugees in Chad for whom she secured additional funding and African Union soldiers in Sudan. Many organizations have recognized Congresswoman Jackson Lee. Ebony Magazine, for example, held her as one of the 100 most fascinating black women of the 20th century. Congressional Quarterly named Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee as one of the most effective members of Congress, ranking her in the top 50. U.S. News and World Report named her as one of the 10 most influential legislators in the House of Representatives. And the Houston Chronicle uh, named Sheila Jackson Lee as one of the most influential and prolific legislators in Capitol Hill. Uh, most recently, she was named a member of Congress with the largest and most impressive vocabulary, <laughs> based on the words that may be found on the uh, SAT test. So as evidenced by the long, outstanding career of Congresswoman Jackson Lee, we are honored to have her join us today. Um, please welcome uh, me and the rest of us in, in, in her attendance at this uh, symposium. Thank you. Good morning. I like uh, Big Desk. I need to take this one up to Washington, D.C. <laughs> Let me uh, thank you for um, your presence here. The audience is inspiring by itself. Uh, so I'm going to ask you so that you can wake up and, and get really uh, lively here. I can't ask you to dance. Is to give yourselves a rousing applause, loud enough that we can raise the roof. Act like you're at the Rockets and they're in the final game of the NBA Finals. Let's go. Give yourselves a rousing applause. Uh, we'll look forward to the Rockets doing that. Dean Adams, it's a pleasure to be with you again. And uh, this school continues to grow in its excellence and its service. Uh, as I look to the landscape of healthcare in America, I know that Purview A&M School of Nursing, uh, who has had its own mountains and valleys, now at the mountaintop of service, needed all across America as we begin our new journey in the implementation of the Affordable Care Act. I know your nurses are going to be on the front line. Give her and the applause. Thank you for your educational excellence. Let me thank uh, as well um, something that is near and dear to my heart. That is the work of Dr. Lovell Jones. 
Uh, I call him a national treasure. He has been working with members of Congress uh, for more than two decades, and he has generated out of his advocacy a number of unique and outstanding efforts uh, that we have promoted. I uh, offered uh, and established the Office of Minority Populations that exist in Health and Human Services, numbers of grants that have enhanced uh, the issue of disparities in health care. I would say to you that when Dr. Jones started, uh, I can tell you that there were no lingo about disparities in health care. You're sick, you're sick. They didn't understand the Native American population, they didn't understand Hispanic population, African American, uh, whites who came from rural America, all of those environmental, uh, if you will, impact issues were not in the psychic of legislators some years ago. My predecessor, one of them, uh, the Honorable Mickey Leland, certainly had a sense of the environmental impact here in Texas by advocating for the uh, toxic center that is still in the Texas Medical Center um, and still exists, though we are in always in jeopardy of its funding, but it dealt with the idea of toxicity in the air because Houston had for a traditional amount of time, even today, uh, problems with air quality because we are in the energy corridor. Let us give Dr. Lovell James for his uh, research, his academic presence, but more importantly, his stubbornness and steadfastness on the issue of advocating for the existence, the research, of four disparities in health care. That's why you're here today. Dr. Lovell Jones. Very light With MD Anderson, I, I'm always online uh, reading uh, various uh, new uh, opportunities that MD Anderson is involved in. We speak a lot about the hospital in Washington because of the importance now of research and the research. And one of the things that I have been working on in the last uh, couple of years and have been successful in my legislative efforts, I want to continue to do so, is that is on the disparity that defines itself in triple negative uh, breast cancer, uh, which um, I have had experience with through my uh, constituents. Uh, I've seen uh, the immediacy of triple negative breast cancer and have tried uh, to press upon my colleagues of the importance of continued research. I obviously was successful with MD Anderson because uh, Dr. DiPacino, after having conversations with him in advocacy, uh, has initiated under the MD Anderson umbrella research in that area. We have passed just recently out of the Defense Authorization Bill, uh, my amendment, which is quite extensive, is collaboration with the Department of Defense uh, Health Office and the Natural Institutes of Health to collaborate on research dealing with the genetics and biomarkers of triple negative breast cancer, which we have not been able to determine why it is so deadly. And it impacts African American women, Hispanic women, and uh, white women, and if you come to see, we have not done the test to have a, a ready understanding of Native American women, but I would imagine that um, in this research we will include them, but if you understand breast cancer stages one, two, three, and four, just imagine that you have triple negative, you jump to four immediately, and to hear the uh, daughters and sons of those mothers uh, who had developed it and had no appreciation of how deadly triple negative is and to find that they were lost in two months, three months, seven months, 11 months maybe, uh, that their loved one is gone. That's the impact of health disparities in one instance. And so as we work towards social justice as this particular session uh, is in, I thought I would not compete with those who are trained uh, in the sciences even though I served a number of years on the science committee and consider myself an aficionado of uh, pushing for the next level of science, whether it is through NASA, which of course many of you may be aware that in human space exploration we did research in HIV AIDS, we did it in stroke, heart disease, and cancer, and so I am a uh, diabetes and strong and very much uh, an advocate of space exploration. I cite for you Dorothy Hyde, who has been honored uh, by naming this epic after her, 
Harvey Heist said, I want to be remembered as someone who used herself and anything she could touch to work for justice and freedom. I want to be remembered as one who tried. And that's what I ask you to do as you sit in this room as students. We cannot have those who sit along the highway and watch and wave a flag, though that is certainly an action item. We really need those who are going to get in the fight. I am wearing a large, uh, if you will, button here that emphasizes the need for involvement. Right now, we will be addressing a bill, and I'm mixing a lot of things together as I rush off the stage because I am off to a presentation regarding gun violence, and I will make a little comment about that. And I have people waiting, but I wanted to make sure that I was here. The red button uh, symbolizes my opposition to cutting $20 billion out of the Supplemental Nutrition Program, which is going to be on the floor this week. More than likely, uh, we will not be successful. Uh, and uh, there will be $16 billion amendment that I am crafting right now to restore $16 billion to match the Senate, which has uh, put in a $4 billion cut. The House has a $20 billion cut, all in the name of sequestration, the most devastating, uh, non-effective tool of budget cutting you could ever imagine. But if you're here talking about health care, you may be happily comfortable in a class, maybe your tuition is already paid, and you are in a cocoon not worrying about what is around you. If I leave this stage and leave you with anything, I ask you to get engaged in the public debate about what is important in America. It's the only way that we're going to be able to promote and continue good health. Because does anyone think you can have good health without good nutrition? I can't hear you. No. Uh, if you have a food stamp program or supplemental nutrition that is on $4.50, which I took to test. I went to HEB and I spent $3.91. I got a packet of smoked chicken, two apricots, two potatoes, one um, a tomato, one avocado, and one bottle of orange juice. Imagine a family or a child having to live off of that. I will be eating one day breakfast lunch, and dinner. I will only have the smoked chicken in a package that was 58 cents in the dinner time. I will try to survive off of the avocados, and I did get a banana for breakfast. I will try to survive off of one potato, avocado, tomato, parts of it. I'll cut it in half, and then the rest will be for dinner. Imagine that for a child. I have no milk, no cereal, no real vegetables. And so when you think about health care, you have to broaden your vision beyond just the idea of someone coming in on a gurney with an emergency situation. What you must think about is what Dorothy said, as I reflect on the hope and challenges facing women in the 21st century, I'm also reminded of the protracted struggles of African-American women who joined together as sisters in 1935. In response to Mrs. Bethune's call, it was an opportunity to deal creatively with the fact that black women stood outside the American mainstream of opportunity, influence, and power. As she grew, she understood it was all women. She understood and advocated for Hispanic women and Asian women, Native American women. And so in the instance of what we're doing here, we must recognize that today disparities still exist. They still exist in a number of areas where I know that you have understood them. The Centers for Disease Control uh, looks at trends based on race for 15 years, found that prior to the implementation of the Affordable Care Act, uh, you found a disparity in many of our groups. 143,000 hospitalizations for 18 to 44-year-old African Americans were preventable because we implemented the Affordable Care Act. Uh, renal stage, uh, renal disease, end-stage renal disease uh, impacts uh, Native Americans and African Americans disproportionately. Heart disease, breast cancer is not only a personal cause for me, but also I've seen the disparities in minorities, which is one of the reasons that I introduced the triple negative breast cancer. And as I, if I did not conclude my remark, that amendment passed in a defense authorization that was a great leap. We couldn't get it passed last year. We have it passed this year. Now our fight is to keep it in and to make sure that it stays in as it goes through the Senate. So what do I want to leave with you today uh, as you proceed through this process? Numbers are simply numbers. Uh, in September, we will be approaching one of the largest challenges uh, that this nation will have. It is to make real the fight we had for decades since the 1965 passing of Medicare is to give as much health care to America as we could. Uh, my hope was that we would have had the public option.
That means that we would have had a comparable system like Medicare for all of you, for all of America. And you could have opted into the public option system, which would cover everybody. We did not go that route. So we have something called uh, exchanges. And all of you who are students need to look at your health care construct. Maybe most of you are under the system here. If you are not under the system in college, we've made it where you will be able to opt in. If you're not 26, you can stay on your parents' insurance. Did not happen five years ago. But if you're over it, you should have an opportunity for a manageable exchange that you can be in. But here's the greatest challenge that we have. In September, we will have the challenge to enroll America. People want to enroll in school, they have a desire, they know they can go to a school building, uh, they can go online, and they can enroll. Try to enroll 350, 60, 70 million Americans plus. That'll be our challenge. I'm determined for us not to be a laughing stock. And I hope that I will be able to collaborate with hospitals, Purview A&M. We should have an enrollment day right here on this campus. We should join in partnership and go around the city the 18th Congressional District, which is the city, and enroll people. For that is the only way that the Affordable Care Act is going to work, which is going to allow you to access hospitals and clinics and doctors and specialists, and it's going to allow you not to be left along the highway of despair in health care. And so if we are going to be both students of health care, proponents of health care, you have to be advocates of health care. You have to actually accept that you are part of Martin's dream. It will never be fulfilled. Those in this room do not grab hold of it, climb the mountaintop that he challenged us on April 3rd, 1968, the night before his death, when many of us believe he prophesied his death. For it offered to us, not to us of color, but he said to America, I have been to the mountaintop. I have seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I know that we as a people will get there someday. We're in some very difficult times. There is a very huge divide in Washington, one that I don't like, one that I've never seen in the years that I've served. If the people of America don't demand that the divide ends, we're going to go down in infamy in that divide. If we cannot come together, if we have continuously those who pray to the idol of the Tea Party, as opposed to recognizing the red, white, and blue. And the greatness of America is the investment in her people. That means that we must enroll people in health care. We must eliminate the disastrous cuts in the supplemental nutrition program on the basis of sequestration. When I voted for a very large defense bill, why? Because I care about the men and women in the United States military who are on food stamps themselves, but I care about you. And therefore, it is vital uh, in this time of technology that you use your YouTube, email, Twitter account and understand what is going on in Washington to be able to send advocacy notes. Don't cut food stamps. Come together around a budget. End sequestration. Don't cut or raise interest rates on my student loans that will be raised to 6.8% if we don't come together by July 1st. It is not to be a bearer of bad news. It is to provoke you, who are the cream of the crop, to be engaged beyond these four walls. If you're an advocate of health care, then you advocate it all the time. And you engage in discussions that will make the service of health care much better. You are, in fact, going to be part of the implementation. We'll need more nurses. We'll need more nurse practitioners, physicians, uh, all of the support systems in the health care industry. We will, in fact, need you. And right now, I can tell you today that as much as we've advocated, the disparities in health care still exist. Uh, there are people coming into emergency rooms and hospitals because they could get no preventative care. It is my challenge to you today to help us climb the mountain of the promised land and be able to be on that journey to get there as Martin King challenged us to do. You look like you have the tools and the ability. I only ask that you use it. I'm grateful for your ability to be here today in your service, and I'm most grateful to be able to be part of this gigantic effort 
and that is to close the gap of mental health disparities. The question is, are you going to be part of the army of self, or army of help, which is the one that you will do to be able to raise America to her greatest and higher angels? She is a great country, but only great, because each and, one, each and every one of you will be part of her success. God bless all of you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you for having me today. Thank you. Uh, just to thank you again, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your uh, support of this effort. But this is the Dorothy I. Height Center for Health Equity and Evaluation Research. And uh, Dr. Jones had to get permission from the Dorothy Height family. Uh, that's a great leap uh, that this is a respected uh, entity and something that Dorothy Height. Uh, would be affiliated with. I ask you all to Google her. A very impressive woman, one of the first women and only women to be in the early parts of the Civil Rights Movement back in the 1940s and of course uh, as well uh, the continued women's movement. So she is an icon in and of herself. But this is a certificate of special congressional recognition presented for the Dorothy I. Hyde Center for Health Equity and Evaluation Research. 11th Annual Disparities in Health in America Working Toward Social Justice Workshop. It concludes by saying that this effort, and Dr. Jones and this workshop and this effort of curing health disparity uh, is in fact deserving of the commendation, respect, and admiration of the United States Congress. I'm delighted to say that Sheila Jackson, Lee, Member of Congress, June 17, 2013. We're going to step this way so that we can get a good shot. Thank you all very much. Does anyone have one question? Anyone have a question? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to get to you first. Your hand went up. Yes, stand up. Tell me your name and get the question. Thank you. Hi, my name is Amy Henderson. I'm a student here at the College of Nursing. Excellent. I want to know what would be your tools for success? <laughs> well, I always tell people um, that the best tool for success is finding a passion of something you want to change or be part of. Uh, and as you do that um, and become and, and hone your skills on that which you want to see better. Uh, and I encourage everyone to get involved in something that is community. Um, it is not difficult. I know that you are knocked down, undercover, burdened down with studies. But if you allow that to be your only focus, uh, even during these uh, formulative years of your cerebral understanding of what you are doing, the science of nursing, that is so vital. But we know that you have a moment. And so if you would find that passion to be able to involve in that, that issue, and maybe it could be out of your studies that you find something that is not right in the healthcare system. I hope that you will join us. We're going to come back to the Purview A&M School of Nursing. I'm going to try to get some volunteers to help us in our enrollment. This is the biggest civil rights cause right now. We don't get Americans enrolled, it will be for North. And that is enrolled in these exchanges so they can get uh, access to health care. And who better than nursing students and nursing persons who have the uh, ability uh, to be able to encourage people about their health. So again, it's a passion that you develop in yourself, you find a way to act on that passion, and then you will have building blocks as you grow and graduate and get into the uh, professional world. People will find you to be able to be a change maker. That is what you should be looking to, and success comes by people looking and saying, you know what, uh, she makes a difference, no matter where it is in life. Is that all right? Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. I'm so glad to be with you. I look to come back again. One of the things is that you can advocate for is a continuation of this center. Uh, Dr. Jones can't do it alone. And anyone that does not understand the vitality and the vibrantness of this system uh, needs to do their research. Send your emails and texts in the right place of saying, keep this center. Is that all right? Okay, let me hear you. Not loud enough. Yes. Thank you. Bye-bye.